Hello everyone. This video is about external LFOs. So I'm going to bring an instance of analog in here. That's just the basic analog preset. I'm going to put uh, one C3 note in there. So I can trigger a synth like so. Now then, we've already looked at how to use the internal analog LFO. Um, you switch it on here, you've got two of them and you can change the rate and you can change it to, to be synced to the tempo of the track and you can change the waveform here. They're the main controls that we've looked at so far. Oops a daisy. Uh, but what I want to look at today is an external LFO. So for that I'm going to go to Max for Live. I'm going to look at Max Audio Effect and go down and find LFO and click and drag it in here. So this enables us to modulate a lot more parameters um, than we normally have uh, the option to modulate with an LFO. This is what I'm going to refer to as the internal analog LFO. This is an external LFO. Um, okay, so it's got the same sort of controls as you would expect. We can change the waveform here from sine to triangle or square or random or something that's called bin. Don't even know what that is. Um, I'm gonna go back to sine wave for now. We can change the rate here or the frequency. This is free, this is called free running. This is synced to the track. Um, so uh, if you want it to be in time with um, the beat of your track, uh, this is the depth control. Um, you, this is an offset for, um, What's this say? This shifts the center point of the LFO waveform. Um, now then, let me see if that might make a little bit more sense if we make that a square wave. Now go back to normal there by double clicking. Yeah, okay, so if you're using a square wave, um, then it changes the shape of the square wave. Um, Experiment with that one. I, I don't really use it too much to be honest and um, you can hold it in position or you can change the phase um, I'll never really use those two controls. Okay, so um, Our synth at the minute sounds like this All right, um, and I'm going to use this LFO to modulate let's say filter frequency I'm also going to change this back to sine wave now it sounds like this Okay, that's very nice. And we could also map this LFO to up to eight parameters simultaneously. All we need to do is press this little button here. And we see all of the different mappings and we could map this to, let's say, detune. And now our synth sounds like this. I'm just gonna extend this MIDI note so that it's uh, not re-triggering every bar. Okay, that's quite nice. I could also maybe map it to the semitone. Okay, we've got a lot more movement there, um, but what you'll notice is that the semi, uh, semitone and the detune parameter are both moving in the same direction. It's not particularly interesting. So why don't we invert one of the ranges? We can do that here, where this says 0% and 100%. This is where you set the range of movement between 0% and 100% of the parameter. Um, so if we make this 100% here and 0%, you should see that detune has started to move the opposite direction to semitone. Okay, that's okay, um, but it doesn't really sound like much until we bring oscillator 2 in. Okay, now that's working all right, but I don't really like this semitone so, uh, modulation, so I'm gonna set that back to how it was. And then I'm going to modulate this detune parameter. And rather than it being 100% to zero, I'm gonna put this down to, let's just say, um, about, I don't want too much, let's just have, actually, I'll tell you what, let's do it a different way. I'll leave this on 100% and zero. I'll leave that on zero and 100, and then I'm gonna change the modulation depth. 
Okay, so as I change the modulation depth, see the this range of movement is smaller than it was before. When I had the depth on 100%, it's going all the way through the range of, um, of values there. I'm just gonna reduce that, let's have a listen. I'm also gonna change this back to free running and turn the rate down. Okay, just increase the resonance a little bit there so you can uh, so you can hear the filter cut off moving. All right, okay. So this is how we can uh, use an external LFO and we can map it to any of these parameters. One of the quite exciting things you can do is we can bring the internal LFO into the equation now. And let's use the internal LFO, say, to modulate the amplitude by going to the amp module here and increasing this um, this value, which is underneath the level mod. I'm gonna change the internal LFO waveform to, let's try triangle. All right, cool. so we've got a little bit of rhythmic um, amplitude modulation happening here. Now let's see if we can use this external LFO um, we'll just leave it on the same one for now, see if it works. If it doesn't, I'll bring another one in. And let's modulate one of these LFO parameters, like for example, the rate. Okay, so we've got a visual indication here of how the rate is increasing. So when we see more triangles, the frequency is increasing. When we see fewer triangles, the, the frequency is decreasing. So what it means is that amplitude modulation gets quicker as we, the frequency goes higher and it gets lower as the frequency goes lower. Sorry, slower as the frequency goes lower. Okay, so hopefully you can see from that that the options are fairly wide open and fairly broad. They're not limitless, that would be a lie, because um, you are limited to the parameters that, you've, um, that you can modulate on analog, but using one of these external LFOs can be very powerful. And of course, um, we could just bring another one in if you want to modulate different parameters with a different setup, a different waveform, different rate, different depth, that sort of thing. And we could even use this LFO to modulate this LFO. See what it sounds like. Okay, have fun with that.